grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, through Jesus Christ, our coming Savior. Amen. The text for this morning's sermon is the Old Testament lesson from the book of Micah, Micah chapter 5, beginning at verse 2. I invite you to follow along as we look at these verses. Micah chapter 5, beginning at verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This is God's Word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our coming Savior and King, the one whose birth we are preparing to celebrate, your fellow children of God. All the presents had been opened, or at least she thought they had. That's when John reached under the Christmas tree and picked up a, a little present that was ne nearly buried under the wrapping paper in the boxes. What's this, asked Mary. Oh, little surprise, John replied. Go ahead, open it. Carefully, Mary untied the bright red ribbon and undid the wrapping paper. Then she opened the box and inside she discovered another box. A small little box covered in black velvet. Jewelry box. Her heart skipped a bead and then began to race. Could it be? Could it really be? Carefully Mary took out the box and lifted back the cover and there it was. A diamond ring. An engagement ring. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Sometimes big things come in small packages. Prophet Micah foretold that something like that would happen one day in the future. One day something big, or shall I say someone big, someone of tremendous importance would come from some place rather small. From the small and insignificant village of Bethlehem, a king would come, a great king, and a mighty shepherd for God's people. The village of Bethlehem lay about six miles south of Jerusalem. It wasn't exactly what you would call a, a blinker town, you know, blink and you miss it. You know, two bars, a grocery store, and a gas station. Actually, in Micah's day, Jerusalem may have had as many as a thousand inhabitants. And yet, in comparison to other towns like you know, Jericho or Gezer or Jerusalem, it was nothing, just a small, insignificant little town in, in the cities of Judah. It was a quiet little town, kind of the place where you might expect to see you know, sheep grazing on a hillside or a farmer out in his field field, sowing seed, but don't be deceived by appearances. Sometimes big things come in small packages. Take King David, for example. He came from this small little town of, of Bethlehem. It's where he grew up, tending sheep for his father, Jesse. And that's also where David was anointed by Samuel to be the next king of Israel. Micah wasn't talking about David, though. David had lived and ruled on the throne of, of Israel almost 250 years ago already. Now, Micah, Micah was talking about a, a different king, a king, as he said, who, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. How could that be? How could someone who had yet to be born have origins from of old, from, from ancient times? The obvious answer is that he can't. 
unless he's God. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel told Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Yes, these words of the prophet Micah were fulfilled in that baby who was born in Bethlehem. Jesus, you see, was so much more than just the human son of Mary. He was Emmanuel, God with us. He was the eternal son of God come down to earth in human flesh so that he might live for us and die for us as our Savior. He is this great ruler who would come from the village of Bethlehem. He is this great king whose origins are are from of old, whose origins actually go back beyond the beginning of time. And yes, he is our king, the leader of God's people, the, the ruler of God's kingdom. Of course, it's only by the grace of God that you and I can call Jesus our king. Because it's not like we were born into His kingdom. Because we weren't. You and I are not like the little boy and girl that were born to Prince William and Kate Middleton in the past few years. The, you know, the newest members of the British royal family. No, you and I had to be reborn in order to enter the kingdom of God. And that's exactly what happened in our baptism. In the waters of holy baptism, God washed our sins away and He adopted us into His family as His very own children and made us members of His kingdom. But not second-class citizens. Brothers. You heard me right, brothers. You and I are those other brothers that Micah is talking about in verse 3 of our text. Those who by faith have have joined the family of God. You see, it's not like God brought us into His kingdom but then kept us safely at arm's length. No, God has brought us close to Him. Not only members, made us members of His kingdom, but made us members of His very family. Brothers and sisters of Christ the King. When you were little, did you ever want to join a club of some kind but your friends wouldn't let you? You know, you, you, you weren't old enough or, or cool enough or, you know, you didn't know the password so you couldn't get in. How thankful we can be that it doesn't work like that in God's kingdom. That God hasn't made His kingdom an, an exclusive club only for the rich and famous. Now, by His grace and mercy, God has opened His kingdom to all people, including people like you and me, so that we too might worship Jesus as our Savior and our King. In addition to a great king, Micah also identifies this ruler who had come from the village of Bethlehem as a mighty shepherd. Listen again to what he says in verse 4. He says, He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Of course, it wouldn't be a surprise to anyone for someone coming from Bethlehem to be identified as a shepherd. Shepherds were a common sight in the fields and hillsides around Bethlehem. David himself was a shepherd, as were many of his, his ancestors. It was the shepherd's job, of course, to care for the sheep, to lead them to adequate grazing land, lead them to water, and to protect them from their enemies. The rulers back in Micah's day, the kings of Israel, were often referred to as shepherds. But they had been rather poor shepherds. Instead of caring for God's people, more often than not, the only ones they cared about were themselves. They often took advantage of God's people, used their positions and their authority to benefit themselves, make themselves rich. 
And you thought that only happened here in Chicago. When it came to protecting God's people from their enemies, they had been a miserable failure. If it wasn't the Edomites, then it was the Syrians attacking some Israelite village, ransacking their homes, killing the people. Just a few short years, it would be the Assyrians invading from the north, destroying town after town and village after village, eventually carrying the entire northern nation of Israel off into captivity. About 100 years after that, it was the Babylonians also invading from the north, this time attacking Jerusalem itself and carrying their people away into captivity. Now, try as they might, the, the kings, the The shepherds of God's people were not able to protect them from their enemies. But this shepherd would be different. Even though he would come from this small little village of Bethlehem, this shepherd would be a mighty shepherd. A shepherd who not only would be able to provide for his people, but also protect them from their enemies. Because as Micah says, he would shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. Again, the shepherd Micah is referring to is Jesus. Our shepherd Jesus feeds and nourishes our souls in the green pastures of His Word. He refreshes our tired and weary spirits with that refreshing and life-giving water of the gospel. And He protects His people as well protects us from our real enemies, Satan, death, and and hell. Those are the enemies we face. Those are the ones who would seek to attack our souls and destroy our souls. Jesus, our shepherd, has defeated them. Of course, it cost him his life to do so. And yet, Jesus, our shepherd, was willing to pay that price. Because of his great love for us, Jesus willingly laid down his life on the cross to defeat our enemies. And by his death and resurrection, he won the victory. Sin has been defeated. Death has been defeated. Satan has been defeated. And Christ, our shepherd, stands victorious. No longer do you and I need to live in in fear of sin, afraid that our sins might condemn us to hell. No, our sins have been forgiven, thanks to Jesus, our shepherd. No longer do you and I need to live in fear of death, afraid that when we close our eyes in death, we we might never open them again. No, death has now become the door to life, unending life in the Father's house, thanks to Jesus, our shepherd. No longer do you and I need to live in fear of the devil, Afraid that he might attack us during some moment of weakness and drag our souls off to the dungeons of hell. No one can snatch us from our shepherd's hand. These are the thoughts that are expressed so beautifully in the words of one of our hymns. Jesus, shepherd of the sheep, who your father's flock does keep, safe we wake and safe we sleep, guarded still by you. In your promise firm we stand. None can take us from your hand. Speak, we hear at your command. We will follow you. By your blood our souls were bought. By your life salvation wrought. By your light our feet are taught. Lord, to follow you. Yes, you and I can live in peace because Jesus is our shepherd. Because Jesus is our peace. People might not have thought much when a little baby named Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem. But as Micah reminds us this morning, sometimes big things come in small packages. That tiny little baby who lay in Mary's arms would one day grow up to be our shepherd and our king. Amen.